Hey all viewers and viewers, my name is John Red Strategist and just before we get into today's episode of Doki Doki Literature Club, I have a quick announcement that I'd like to make concerning this series. Now, a couple of people have commented um, or sent messages to me privately, basically referring to this series and saying that they would ideally like to see me actually get episodes of this out quicker than I normally would. Because obviously here on my channel I have a very sort of particular schedule, things I upload, so like I you know, upload three videos in various series, then I upload an RTCW video, then I upload another three, and because I have so many kind of different games that I'm playing at the moment, naturally, you know, the upload schedule is quite staggered. So I'll upload an episode in one series, but then I might not, you know, publish another one until maybe a week later or so, potentially, roughly. So people want me to actually uh, put this series out a bit more frequently, just because I think people are really enjoying it. They're finding it uh, quite entertaining to watch. So in that case, I've just um, made this quick little in here just to basically say I've got your feet I've well I've, I've seen your comments your messages and basically yes I'll see what I can do so basically I'm going to start uploading episodes of Doki Doki much more frequently than I normally would that way you're not having to wait for you know up to a week or so before new episodes come out so I'll aim to try and maybe uh, get through it well get through all the episodes maybe sort of every two or three videos or so roughly whilst trying to keep the general sort of structure of other kind of series roughly intact as it is now so yes hopefully that'll uh, satisfy all you folks out there um the thing is i've actually got all of the episodes of doki doki recorded now um because i had a big recording session since because since you know i'm going to be uploading them much more frequently that means i'm going to have to have well plenty of things block recorded in advance so i kind of um Block recorded so many episodes that I ended up completing the game. So there you go. Don't worry. Uh, everything's uh, pre-recorded, so I'll be able to, uh, well, adhere to a much uh, quicker upload schedule. So with that out of the way, let's get to the episode. So enjoy, everybody. <laughs> Hey all viewers and viewers, my name is General Red Strategist and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. This is episode 9. So, you remember of course, last episode, shit went down. Or rather it hit the fan, whichever metaphor you want to use. Sayori is gone. She committed suicide and I'll be honest, I, I, you know, I felt like the game was potentially going to go in that direction but even still, it was still really fucking emotional. And it was quite a kick in the teeth, that was. I mean, you could probably tell, listening to, you know, my commentary as I was reading things out. There was a point there where I was struggling to kind of keep things together. But more than that, apart from that, some really weird shit is starting to happen. You know, straight away, obviously, there's this on the screen before you right now. All my old save files have gone, apparently corrupted, because Sayori has been, well... Uh, character file, something like that, has been, well, corrupted or gone missing, something like that. And so it's, you know, tried to get me to start a new game. And then, of course, there's Monica, who, you know, I, I, I'm i telling you now, I don't trust that character. She is, she knows too much. She's been fourth war breaking. And there was something else as well, actually, that I picked up on between episodes off camera. So... You, you know, you remember that Sayori hung herself. Well, I was looking back over, um, you know, the few sort of minutes that preceded that, and I noticed that Monica had a certain line. She said that I, Herr Glutfack, kind of left her hanging. And... No. Just, just no. <laughs> that... You see, I... If I was... wasn't... Yeah. You know, that's the sort of thing you could easily just think is maybe just a sort of horrible, dark in-joke. But after all the fourth wall breaking stuff that Monica's been doing, I don't think it's a joke. I think she knew. She fucking knew something was going on. Okay. Question mark, question mark, question mark. We're going to keep going with the game. And we're going to see what happens. So, <laughs> we've got a good garbled text. I see an annoying girl running toward me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. Is this the start of the game again? This is where Sayori shows up. <laughs> okay, so this time it doesn't recognise who she is. That girl is... whatever. My neighbour and good friend since we were children. 
You know, it's the kind of friend you'd never see yourself making today, but it just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. We used to walk to school together on days like this, but starting around high school she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up, waiting up even. But if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sign idle in front of the camera and let... Blah, 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 catch up to me. Oh, fuck. Um... <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> the game's fucking messing with me. It's an ordinary school day like any other. Mornings are usually the worst, being surrounded by couples and friend groups walking to school together. Meanwhile, I've always walked to school- Okay. <laughs> the game's reset. The last vestiges of Sayori have just been expurged, or expunged rather, not expurged, expurged isn't even a word, is it? The last vestiges of Sayori have just been expunged from the system. <laughs> oh god. I always tell myself it's about time to meet some girls or something like that, but I have no motivation to join any clubs. I'm perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. There's always the anime club, but it's not like there will be any girls in it anyway. Oh boy. So now, it's reset from the beginning, except this time no Sayori. The school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at Zavor, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. There really aren't any that interest me. Besides, most of them would probably be way too demanding for me to want to deal with. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Oh, who's this? How long? Let me sip my tea. Mm. <clears throat> Hair glue pack. Oh, um, fuck you. No, you're not the person I want to talk to right now. You don't, you can't, obviously can't see me, no face cam, but I'm actually pointing accuser, accusingly at my screen right now. Monica. Oh my goodness, I totally didn't expect to see you here. It's been a while, right? Uh, yeah, it has. Monica smiles speedily. If you do need to, will we do know each other. Well, we rarely talked, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic. Basically, completely out of my league. So having a smile at me so genuinely feels a little... What did you come in here for, anyway? Oh, I've just been looking for some supplies to use for my club. Do you know if there's any construction paper in here? Or markers? I guess you could check the closet. You're in the debate club, right? Aha, about that, dear fellow. I actually quit the debate club. Really? You quit? Yes, indeed. To be honest, I can't stand all of the politics around the major clubs, all the backstabbing and school duggery. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. In that case, what club did you decide to join? Actually, I'm starting a new one, dear boy. A liter- Oh, Jesus. Oh, the game is... <laughs> The game's fucking with me. <laughs> Literature? That sounds kind of dull. How many members do you have so far? Um, ah, it's kind of embarrassing, but there are only three of us so far. It's really hard to find new members for something that sounds so boring. Well, I can see that. But it's really not boring at all, you know. Literature can be anything. Reading, writing, poetry. I mean, one of my members even keeps a manga collection in the club room. Wait, really? Yes, indeed, it's funny, right? Most amusing. She always insists that manga is literature too. I mean, she's not wrong, I guess. And besides, a member's a member, right? Did Monica say she? Hmm. Hey there, Herr Gloopfack. By any chance, are you still looking for a club to join? Uh, I mean, I guess so, but... In that case, is there any chance you could do me a big favour? I won't ask you to join, but... If you could at the very least visit my club, it would make me really happy. Please. Um, well, I guess I have no reason to refuse. Besides, how could I ever refuse someone like Monica? Sure, I guess I could check it out here. Yeah. Ah, awesome, dear fellow. You're really sweet, Herr Gloopfack, you know that. Sweeter than the honey from the land of milk and... things. <laughs> I didn't know where I was going with that metaphor, to be honest. <laughs> it's nothing, really. Shall we go, then? Shall we depart for the Literature Club? I'll look for the materials another time. You're more important. <laughs> okay, if you say so. And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul to Monica under an irresistible smile. I typically follow Monica across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit being generally used for third-year classes and activities. 
Monica, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. I'm back, and I brought a guest with me. Ooh! Fuck. Jesus. Minor jump scare. Much. <laughs> Bloody hell. The game is really fucking with me now, isn't it? Okay, uh, Yuri, you were, um... You were uh, Irish, that's right. Eh? A guest? Seriously, you brought boy. Way to cool atmosphere. Don't be mean, Natsuki. But anyway, welcome to the club, Herr Glutflat. Glutflat. All the words escape me is this situation. This club is full of incredibly cool girls, yeah? So let me guess. You're Monica's boyfriend, right? Well, no, I'm not. Nine, nine. Natsuki. Skilvitz's sour attitude, whose name is apparently Natsuki, is one I don't recognise. This is the same dialogue like the first time we played through. A small figure makes me think he's probably a first year. Anyway, this is Natsuki, energetic as usual, and this is Yuri, the vice president. Hmm. Wasn't Sayori the vice president last time? I could have sworn that was the case, but okay. I don't know, have I got that wrong? Am I remembering that correctly? I don't know. It's nice to meet you. Yuri, who appears completely more mature, comparably more mature even, untimid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with someone like Natsuki. Yeah, it's nice to meet you both of you. So, I ran into Hair Glutflack in a class. <laughs> struggling to say it. Maybe I'll just call him Hair Gloop for short. So, I ran into Hair Gloop in a classroom, and he decided to come check out the club. Isn't that great? Wait, Monica. Didn't I tell you to let me know in advance before you brought anyone new? I was going to a well, you know. Sorry, sorry, dear fellow. I didn't forget that, but I just happened to run into him. In that case, I should at least make some tea, right? Indeed, that would be great, Yuri. Why don't you come sit down, Herr Gloop? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. Yuri walks to the corner of the room and opens a closet. Meanwhile, Monica and Natsuki sit across from each other. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Monica. So, I know you didn't really plan on coming here, but we'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the, cl the, flub, the club fun and exciting for everyone. I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club, yeah? You could put it that way, dear fellow. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to persevere to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention immediately like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events like the festival that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, Natsuki? Well, I guess. Natsuki reluctantly agrees, yeah. Such different girls all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these two. Yuri returns to the table, carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot in the middle. You keep a whole tea set into the classroom? Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hard cup of tea gently enjoy a good book? Ah, uh, I guess you are. Ah, don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Yeah, that's not... Insulted Yuri looks away. I meant that, you know. I believe you. Well, tea under eating might not be a pastime for me, but I at least enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. So, Herr Gloop, what kinds of things do you like to read? Well, well, uh... Considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga? I mutter quietly to myself, half-joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. Oh, wait, I went into Irish then, what am I doing? Looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. Not much of a reader, I guess. I can fucking tell the moment you came into the room, you feckin' bastard. Well, that can change, yeah. <laughs> Adding a few lines of my own. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favourites are usually oh, my favourites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading, yeah. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her, li bleh, by the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. But you know, I like lots of things. 
Stories with a deep psychological uh, stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can just so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you fucking What did you just say? Hmm. That's a line that is familiar to me. I feel like that might have been said before. But of course the first time round I didn't pick up on it. Of course now after everything that's happened, I do pick up on it. Game. Oh god, you're fucking with my head. Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. <laughs> yeah, and I've been playing one right now. I read a horror book once. I just really grasped something I can relate to at a minimal level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. Ah, I'd expect that from you, Yuri. It suits your personality. Oh, is that so? Really, if a story makes me think or takes me to another world, then I can't really, really, really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at, ch successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Oh god, you hear that? Do you hear the sound of those bricks tumbling? All that masonry? Yeah, it's the fourth wall. It's By this point, it's gone. It doesn't exist anymore. It's just been completely bulldozed. You know? If you listen hard enough, you can still hear that bulldozer rumbling off into the distance, with Monica sat behind at the wheel probably bulldozing a load of characters in her way, starting with Sayori. Ugh, I heard horror. Oh, what? Oh, wrong voice. Oh, why's that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart, dart over to me. That's not the right voice, that's Irish, what I'm doing. <laughs> Natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right, you usually write, like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? What gives you that idea? You left a piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting, and I was prying into its contents. It looked like you were writing. Uh, you were working on a poem called "Don't Say It Out Loud, Diavoli, or I will call secret police to take you away." And give that back. Fine, fine. Let's you write your own poems, yeah. Uh, well, I guess sometimes. Why you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometimes? No. <laughs> Dear me. What was, um... Oh yeah, Nyet. Nyet. That's Russian for no, isn't it? That's key that's her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Ah, not a very confident writer. You... I keep going Irish. Why do I keep going Irish? Yuri's presence in the room is having a sort of effect on me. It's making me go Irish. Is, 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 is Irishness contagious? Can you catch Irishness? <laughs> oh dear. Not a very confident writer yet, yeah. I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an... Oh crap, I just... Get that line again. Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. Dot dot dot. I guess it's the same for Yuri. If we all sit in silence for a moment... Hey, I just got a brilliant idea. Roll the R a little bit. How about this? <laughs> dot dot dot. Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Then next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Um. Dot dot dot. Uh. I mean, I thought it was a brilliant idea, but your lukewarm reactions now make me question my own judgment. Well. I think you're right, Monica. We should probably start finding activities for all of us to participate in together. I did decide to take on the responsibility of Vice President, after all. I need to do my best to nurture the club as well as its members. Besides, now that we have a new member, it seems like a good step for us to take. Do you agree as well, Herr Gloop? Hold on, there's still one problem. Eh, what's that? Now that we've reached the most important topic, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I have joined this club. <coughs> Monica may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision, yeah. I still have other clubs to look at, and, um... I lose my train of thought. All three girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. <laughs> and they sink down. <laughs> but... Oh my god, the boat's so sinking down. I'm sorry, I thought... Hmm. Eh? As the girls exchange glances before Monica turns back to me. I guess I need to tell you the truth, Herr Gloop. The thing is... We don't have enough members yet to form an official club. We need four. And I've been trying really, really hard to find new members. 
If we don't find one more before the festival, then we will be doomed. Dot a dot. I'm defenceless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? I would feel terrible for letting everyone down in this situation. And besides, the club itself seems pretty relaxed. So if writing poems is a price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls. Yeah. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the Literature Club. For yours, the Literature Club is not over. Von by von, the girls' eyes light up. Oh my goodness, really, dear fellow? Do you really mean that, Herr Gloop? Yeah. It could be fun, right? You really did scare me for a moment. I mean, if you're if you're really just left after all this, I'll be super pissed. Herr Gloop, I'm so happy. We can become an official club now. Thank you so very much for this. You're really an amazing person. I'll do everything I can to give you a great time, okay? Well, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over at me... Oh, wrong voice. Monica looks over at me once more. Hey, Gloop, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. Aha! Yeah. Can I impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri cleans up the tea set. I guess I'll be on my way then. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow then. I can't wait. Oh shit, I just took the text box away by accident, I think. <laughs> with that, I depart the club room to make my way home. The hallway, my mind wanders back and forth between the three girls. Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. No, Sayori. No, Sayori. Rip in peace. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in a literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to go closer to one of these girls. Alright, I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances, and I'm sure good fortune will find me. Nah, yeah, I don't think it will, mate. Not after what's happened so far, which you can't seem to remember. But I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. Time to write a poem. Oh. You have unlocked a special poem. Would you like to read it? Yes. No. 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 Just no. That is not okay. Fuck you. Uh, go away. I don't want to see that right now. Well, we're back. <sighs> Fuck you, game. Let me drink of my tea. It's getting a bit cold. Oh. Jesus. Yeah, that is going cold. Mm. <laughs> okay. Let me just drink this up. <laughs> God, that was a beautiful moment I just had there. <laughs> oh, you just see me sort of swallowing my tea down, gulping it away very quickly. Okay, back to the old uh, familiar territory here. Right then, so we've only got two girls who we can impress this time. So we're going to have to pick one of these. Now, given that we've already had a scene with Natsuki, I think this time we'll go for Natsuki. I think she's, you know, a fairly straightforward one. Obviously, she just wants the kind of cute words, I think, pretty much. Romance. Let's go for that. Moo. Headphones. Who would that be? That would be you as well, would it? So, we've had head romance headphones. Okay. Atone. A misfortune. Despise. Flee. Prayer. Electricity. Hmm. Do -da -do -do -da -da -da. Atone. Let's go for that. Uh, depression, that's a freaking Sayori. Oh no, it's a thingy one. Apparently it's Yuri. Okay, interesting. Uh, let's see, anime. Yes. Yes, please. Um, bubbles. Yeah, that's an easy one for you. It's got catchy, it's got a catchiness to it, this little tune. Yeah. Stop dancing away in the background there. Embrace. Covet. Mmm, yes. Summer. Strawberry. Ugh, sugar. Lust. I'm sorry for that voice. Skirt. Doki doki. Boop. 
playground email why is that why is that a cute one <laughs> okay interesting uh, let's see now uh, we go for 12 mega and finally horror there we go that's a very interesting one okay hello again hair gloop glad to see you didn't run away on us ha 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 now I'm done for it. This might be a little strange for me, but I at least keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. I wonder how this will go, actually. Because if it's just sort of looping back from the beginning, but this time without Sayori, how will all the scenes that we've been through before, how will they play out now that one of the club members is gone? Okay, I was the last one to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out, y'all. Yeah. What? You... Something seems to be wrong with your face there, Yuri. What was going on there? Jesus. The game's giving little things like that, like it's glitching out. It's very unsettling. It's weird. Okay. Thanks for keeping your promise, Hero Gloop Fack. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. What? Natsuki? You, you, are you okay there? Feels like you're having a few weird issues there. Very strange. Oh, come on, like you deserve any slack. You already had to be dragged here by Monica. Don't know if you're planning to just come here and hang out or what, but if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Is it me or is the camera going a bit weird? Yeah, it's definitely going a bit weird. Look at that. It's like zooming in and slowly turning. Oh, it's a bit unsettling. Unset unsettling. How many T's are there in that? Unsettling, everybody. Oh, um... You're... you kind of... Monica, you're kind of blocking the text. I think that's a familiar line, though. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone, yeah, who keeps a manga collection clue. I think that's a line we've heard before, isn't it? Yeah, that camera's definitely zooming in and slowly rotating. Oh, weird. <laughs> okay, okay, she's gone. Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature, Diavoli. Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. I'm sorry, Herr Gloop. We'll make sure to put your comfort first, okay? Yuri... Oh, wrong voice. Yuri shoots Natsuki with a disappointed glance. Um, anyway, now you're in the club and all. Or she might have interest in picking up a book to read. Well, I can't really say no either way. Like you said, I'm in this club now. So it only feels right for me to do something like that if you ask. God, that... It's a bit disorienting, the way the camera's slowly turning and the whole world's now on an incline. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, wait. I didn't mean it like that. Uh, if you don't really want to, then forget I said anything, I guess. Oh, nine. It's not that, Yuri. I want to try to be a part of this club. So even if I don't read often, I'd be happy to pick up a book if you wanted me to. Are you sure? I just felt like... Well, as vice president and all, that I should help, get you, help you get started on something you might like. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so just keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. It's called The Very Hungry Caterpillar. I thought it would be appealing to your uh, intellectual level, <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> you feckin' idiot. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. This is... How is this girl accidentally being so cute, ya? Yeah? She even picked out a book she thinks I like, despite me not reading much. God damn it, if the camera could stop and just correct itself, please. It's getting very weird. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. Because after all, you know, like I say, I picked out that book because it's aimed at children's, you know, it's aimed at a child level, and, you know, you're, you're pretty much, you know, your reading ability is pretty much very little above that of a child's level because you're a feckin' idiot, and... So therefore, that's why I picked it, and you know, you need something that's simple to read, which you can read at your own pace, because you can't read quickly under pressure, because you're a feckin' idiot. Damn, Yuri. Just roast me, why don't you? <laughs> I may have added a few lines of my own. I look forward to hearing what you think. Oh god, Jesus, there it goes, okay, everything corrects itself. Now that everyone's settled in, I expected Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression, like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. 
Ugh. I hear Natsuki utter an exasperated sigh from within the closet. She seems to be annoyed by something. I approach her in case she needs a hand. Oh. I think we're going to save it. Uh -oh. Monica! What did you do? Where's my... She deleted my save file again. You all saw that, didn't you? That was like a flash of a picture. And it was Monica. Oh, I, I'm going to have to go back over the footage and see that again. Oh my. She's deleting my save files, isn't she? Balls to you, Monica. I've got one here. Fuck you. You're not deleting my save files. You're going to delete them. I'm just going to replace them with more. So screw you. Okay. Well, that's where we're going to leave it, everybody. So this was Doki Doki Episode 9. The game is... Yeah, he's, he's fucking with me. Shit's happening. And I really do suspect Monica has things to do with it. It just... Uh, yeah. I've played enough Danganronpa, okay? I know that small details usually mean stuff. You know, the whole Chekhov's gun thing and all that. It doesn't put them in there if there's no meaning to them. So, yes. Ah, thank you, everybody, for joining me for this, and hope you'll join me for part 10, where we'll keep going and see what other weird shit might start happening. If you're not doing this already, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Link's in the video description. There's also a second channel, which you'll find a link to in the video description as well, General Red Propagandist, where I review, slash watch, slash... Uh, react to, <laughs> for a second I couldn't think of the word I was looking for then, react to various anime content sort of stuff. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, go check it out. It's up to you. No, com There's no compulsion on you to do so. But yes, other than that, thank you everybody, and in the meantime, this is General Red signing off. Goodbye all. Oh, got him. Shit, 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 get over the edge. Oh, no, no, go. Get out of here, get out of here, get out, 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 See ya! Oh shit, no! No, no, no! Oh, fuck! I did not mean to do that. Oh, please don't tell me I have to kill it again now. Shit! God, stop! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Yeah. Oh lord! No, 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 no! Holy crap! This area's horrible! Oh, oh my god, I've been shot to fucking pieces! Ah! Oh my- What the fuck? Holy shit! Holy fucking shit! Whoa! Jesus Christ! Holy shit! Fucking hell! Bloody hell! That did like a million damage! This better not be a- Whoa! Shit! No! Oh my fucking god! How many- What? Okay, um, I know I just did an outro there. I just want to stick something on the end here, because after the last episode, you know, where the game put stuff into the uh, Doki Doki Literature Club directory, I decided actually very quickly to just come back here and see if it had done anything else. What's this? There's a text document in here. Why is there a text? This was not... That wasn't there before, was it? What is this? Can you hear me? There's a little devil inside all of us. Beneath their manufactured perception, their artificial reality, is a writhing, twisted mess of dread, loathing, judgment, elitism, self-doubt, all thrashing to escape the feeble hold of their host, seeping through every little crevice they can find, into their willpower, starving them of all motivation and desire, into their stomach, forcing them to drown their guilt in comfort food, or into a newly opened gash in their skin, hidden only by the sleeves of a cute new shirt. Such a deplorable, tangled mass is already present in every single one of them. That's why I choose not to blame myself for their actions. All I did was untie the knot. Huh. <sighs> well, the less said about that, the better. What's this, copyright? Yeah. Yep, yeah, that's just a copyright thing. That was there before. That's definitely not something that's been added. Also, can I just check something? Characters. Oh. You know, hmm. Yeah, because... When I previously, in episode 8, tried to reload that save game, and it said, save are corrupted because Sayori's missing, or... Okay. 
Well, as you can see, we've got three characters here, but no Sayori. So was that always like that, or was... Did Sayori originally have a file there? Oh my god. The more I play of this, the more freaky it gets. This is really cool, though. The game's actually, like, modifying its own directory as it goes along. That's so fucking weird. This is just so bizarre. What the hell? Saves! What do you mean the folder's empty? I had save file. I, I just... What? 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 Beg your pardon? Okay. Well, on that bombshell, I'm going to definitely wrap this episode up here. So, join me for episode 10, everybody. Stick around, and we'll see more in due course. Goodbye, all.